Time now for Life on the Pirate Ship. Here's your host, Harry Arnett. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the show. My name is Harry. As always, Amanda Balionis is sitting all the way across the studio from me. Hey, hey. Good morning to you. Good morning. It is Wednesday, October 19th. I have something that I need to confess. Oh, I always get nervous. Yes. Our show. It's not that kind of a confession. (laughs) Our show today is taped. Oh. Yeah. Because we are at a sales meeting all week. So we took the liberty to record this a mere hours before it would air on Wednesday, October 19th. And as everybody knows who follows life on the pirate ship, or as we call it now, pirate ship podcast, the show is sort of a eclectic show i would call it amanda you you buying that wait what are you calling this podcast now it's eclectic no that's just a description i thought the name was the ship show oh yeah well no that's our colloquialism that's our you know just our nickname the ship Show. we're gonna have have a meeting about this it's like your name is amanda but you probably had a nickname growing up of a or mandy or something like that am i right you you are correct see so the the nickname of the show is the ship show (laughs) but today and as I said, the, the show's eclectic. We right. have guests, all kinds of guests. And yeah. really, it's people from the world of Callaway. Anybody that has kind of an interesting thing to talk about should be topical. Yes. And I thought sometimes we have internal guests, as you know. We've had many, 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 mm-hmm. many, many, many people have said that, that we've had internal guests. And I thought today would be exciting for folks to get a glimpse behind the curtain of what it's like to be at a Callaway sales meeting. Now, it's a little golfy, and sales meetings are very different in golf, but a lot of people ask me when I go around the country or talk to consumers on Twitter or whatever, like, what you know, what's coming up on the sales meeting? How's it going? And we're at a sales meeting this week. I thought, who better than to talk about that but our very own Senior Vice President of Sales for the Americas, Glenn Hickey. I love be that. on the show today. Now, should we explain to people, this isn't just like a sales meeting. This isn't like a weekly meeting that we're talking about. Correct. So let's explain maybe the, the significance. I like that. Well, so we will do two or three of these a year. Okay. And this is our big one. Yep. This is, we're going to show our Salesforce products that will launch uh, months from now. Yep. But it is a huge reveal to our uh, American Salesforce. And this sort of will kick off a bunch of activities between now and when these products actually launch, when golfers, consumers see them sometime in 2017. So it's, it is, it's a national meeting. How many thousands of people are going to be there? You think that 60,000 people? No, we'll have 300, 300 people, maybe 500. No, oh, okay. well, it's since it's a home <laughs> game, we might have close to 500. A lot of people from headquarters will be there. Okay. We're doing it in San Diego. It'll be, an awesome time um and so, as a time when this airs we would have already been one day in and this is my first sales meeting your very first sales meeting yeah, are you excited i am and i have a lot of questions so this is actually the perfect podcast do you see how this works yes yes glenn hickey's gonna be here so don't go anywhere right after this break glenn hickey sitting seated in our hot seat we don't have a name for that seat yet i thought we were gonna work on that but he won't be on Hotline Bling. He's going to be right here. I was going to say, listen, I can't the Hotline in Bling. Studio. It's, it's your turn, Harry. <laughs> so don't go anywhere. I'll be right back with Glenn. You're listening to the Pirate Chip Show, but there's some other crazy stuff going on too, like when Keith Jackson came on to Callaway Live. Between uh, the announcers and the officials, I have plenty of people to cuss at. <laughs> The full episode is up now on CallawayGolf.com slash Callaway Live. Now, back to the ship show. All right, welcome back to the show, Harry. Amanda, as promised, on the show today, we have uh, one of my good buddies and also a very important, powerful man at Callaway Golf, Mr. Glenn Hickey, Senior Vice President of Americas. Do you know what that is, uh, Amanda? The USA. Yes. Yes, Any got other, it. Anything other in the, else in the, in the Americas you can think of? I'll give you a hint. They play hockey. They drink a lot of beer. Canada, Nationals? the Nationals, <laughs> Canada, <laughs> they drink a lot of beer. and also Latin America, right? Correct. Oh, wow. Correct. Glenn, how long have you been at Callaway? Uh, just under 25 years. Actually, <laughs> just over 25 years. Do you know what we give for, that, is that our silver anniversary, 25? It could be. I don't know. Nobody gave me anything. Yeah, you get a, a, a certificate. So <laughs> congratulations on that. We'll frame it for you, and we'll stick it maybe here in the studio. But I know this is a big week for you, so thanks for, for doing this, and um, we already revealed at the top of the show that we're recording this in advance of the Wednesday airing of the show. But this is a big week, isn't it not? 
Oh yeah, every week as we're getting ready for the sales meeting, it's so exciting. You know, that you get the, the team comes in, they're fired up with the new product. It's it's it never gets old. It's a little different now, I think, than it used to be. Um, these kind of things because they have, you know why because the product's really good now. <laughs> Is that why? Has yeah. it gotten easier? Yeah, we don't have to work as hard to sell it. Uh. <laughs> so what what do you guys do? How far in advance of a big week like this? Because you'll have Amanda was asking this before, and we could have. In a San Diego event, we could have up, you know, I'm pushing a thousand people at something like this with all the people from headquarters. How what, how much time goes into preparing for the next two or three days? Well, you know, we start thinking about it, you know, when the last sales meeting is over, which uh, these days we have two or three sales meetings a year. So the minute, you know, we finished the one in Boston in August, we were thinking of this one and, you know, really thinking about how we can continue to excite the team and, and make it unique and different and, and get them fired up to go out there and continue to, you know, grow our business. So what, what kind of goals do you have going into a week like this? What's When you look back after three days, first of all, did you, is everything intact? So, you know, did you take care of yourself? Because things can get a little dicey late night. But what kind of goals do you have for a sales meeting going uh, at the end of it? When they leave, yeah, I want the team prepared to go out and, and when they get home, be prepared to go and, and sell the product with, with confidence, understanding the technology, and really convincing the customer that you know we make the best product and the newest product is better than the old product. So your hours on a sales meeting, I'm a little different. I, I am one of those people, Amanda, that subscribes to nothing good happens after 10 p.m. at a sales meeting. It, so I don't I, think you think anything good happens after 10 p.m., period, that's anywhere. True. You are never that's caught true. out in double digits at night. Never, ever, ever. <laughs> but Glenn, so you're up. I know you're you're one of those weird guys that wakes up at, what do you wake, 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning? Something like that. And you'll you'll go till we go to midnight? Will you make it well, to midnight? Well, I, I believe that my wife might listen to this, so <laughs> I actually go to bed about 9. Tucked in around 9. <laughs> yep. That's when you call, hey, honey, I'm going to bed at 9. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm pretty good. I'll you know I'll go and you know have a drink or two with the guys, but uh, I'll, I'll try to get to bed early because the next day is always a big day, and we want to make sure we have a lot of energy and we're you know, we're going strong. Is that a big part for you? Is that tough to maintain a incredibly high energy level over the course of three days? It's not tough during the time, but afterwards I'm, I'm pretty tired. You know, it's really exciting to get in front of them and it's such a big moment. You know, you only get together a couple times a year and you want to make sure that you, you're at, at the, the top of your game and the guys leave, you know, fired up and understanding what we're trying to do. How many people do you think, um, would you say, have a hand in putting on an event like this? 30 yeah full time too i yeah, mean it's been I mean, hot team, and heavy your team the obviously the events team does a great job and then the sales management team's involved you know from the get-go well it's people like johnny on our team so it's not he's not working that hard <laughs> 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 how do you differentiate these meetings you know the one that was in boston like you mentioned then getting everyone really excited again for you know this meeting coming up and then kind of the cycle continues because it's not just once a year no, so every meeting has a different theme. So the Boston meeting was all about golf ball, and we were in Boston because our Chicopee plant is you know 30 minutes from there. Uh, so that the theme of that meeting was golf ball. This this meeting it's more about our you know the driver we're going to introduce next year. That I can't talk about product as Harry told me, but if I could, I'm, I'm going to mute you. Don't, if you okay. don't mute me. But the, right. the theme of this meeting is that new driver because it's it's by far the best driver we've ever launched, and we're so Ooh. excited about it. So for those listening, you are getting a little bit of a peek behind the curtain as to what's going to be coming in 2017, right? Yeah, I think people will be shocked to know that we're going to be launching a new driver sometime in uh, January, February, right, Glenn? Uh, shocking. <laughs> Can you give us any other piece of information? Well, Amanda, what are you doing? <laughs> it, it, what are you doing here? It goes a long ways and very straight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so I think these, these meetings have also changed a lot because you guys, and you didn't say this, but you really want all of the sales professionals out there in the Americas, when they leave there to feel like they know more about that product than anybody, they can deliver uh, uh, the information about it to our customers that are out there at Greengrass and also off course better than anybody and are really excited about what the technologies bring. Yeah, no doubt about it. And, and the meetings have changed over the years where we used to really you know tell them about it and leave it up to them to you know, go home and practice and, and improve their pitch. But now that's really a big part of the meetings where, you know, we're, we're telling them about the product, we're bringing them in, we're teaching them how to pitch it, we're letting them practice. And then we're actually, we always have a little bit of a 
final exam before they <laughs> leave. Everybody looks the, forward to that. The they? refs really don't like that, but I, I think it's an important part of the meeting, so they take it seriously, and when they leave, they are confident. Have you ever had me? Oh, sorry, man. Oh, no, I say, we, we just had a marketing meeting today, actually, where Harry was encouraging all of us to learn how to do things in different ways. And we kind of, we poke fun at it. Yeah, there there's always going to be a new driver release. There's always going to be, thought you, you know, this fun at me. I was like, why no. would you do that? Why would you tell me? do that all the time. You know, well, we poke fun at a bad idea. It's going to go long. It's going to go straight. How do you differentiate this messaging from year to year, from product to product, specifically with what is coming up? It's so really the key technologies that are, that are in the product. The I mean, our R&D team is so good and, and they're always working with with new materials and and new new ideas. And you know, each time there's a unique you know product. If you go back a couple of years to when we introduced face cup and irons, you know that was an example of how you know you're selling something new and, and different, even though it's a, it's still an iron. And it's the same with this new driver coming up. There's some cool new technologies that have never been seen before. I love that moment um, when you're up there on stage or you're talking to to reps in uh, a smaller format. And a lot of work has gone into this point where we're refining how we want to position the product, what we're going to talk about, what these technologies do uh, are doing. And then when you tell a group of people, which is you know usually two, three hundred people, and you can see on their face instantly whether you got it right or wrong. Absolutely, I love that moment because usually we get it right. I don't love the moment when we get. I was going to say, so well, <laughs> I, uh, now I have to hear about what was the worst where you thought. This is gonna we're gonna knock it out of the park, and then you introduced it, and you're like, oh, never well, mind, never mind. And since since this is a major part of my job too, Glenn, make it something that happened before the last four and a half years, <laughs> if you don't mind. Well, it's interesting if you go back. You know, you, like I said at the beginning, I've been with Callaway a long time, twenty five years, and you know, back in two thousand one, um, the oh, plan. Thank God I wasn't here. The then. plan then was to introduce the ERC two driver, which which was the non conforming driver, uh, and you know it. Obviously, there was a lot of pushback from the marketplace, and we were being boycotted by PGA <laughs> pros. And so there was a hurry up offense to really not make that the primary product. And there was a product that had been designed for Japan, uh, the C4, which is a very it was all, car, <laughs> all carbon composite, very light, you know. And it, I went out and hit it, you know, before the sales meeting. It just was not a good product. And <laughs> uh, you knew it was not going to be successful. So it had a lot of good selling features, Amanda. If the, it, I know this is pr before your time, but. It sounded bad, it was really short, <laughs> and it didn't go straight, and it was hard to hit. So how do you position yourself to the sales team to say, all right, here we go, guys? Yeah, you get them as excited as you can. I mean, we, I think we launched it on Valentine's Day, so we were falling in love with Big Bertha all over again. Uh, but behind the scenes, you're cutting the forecast. And, that, and Glenn, Glenn's a big a big uh, uh, griller. You know, he's, he's an outdoor grill guy. I would imagine during that time, you came home to get to become an expert on how to cook many different dishes with ramen noodles. <laughs> <laughs> that was going to be a lean year. Absolutely. So I feel good that we've come a long way. And what what's some of the weird things that have happened that you've seen at sales meetings over the years? Probably in that same camp when you're trying to do a little seltzer water in the people's faces to, to get them away from the fact that maybe your products weren't very good. Well, you know, this was an interesting year and a sad year in itself. And it was 2001 again, where our sales meeting actually was canceled because of 9-11. And we ended up rescheduling it three or four weeks later. And, you know, the, the whole team was obviously very, you know, stressed out. There was a high level of anxiety. And so we decided to do a talent show uh, that <laughs> year where each region um, put together a show, basically. And we uh, rented out of the... Um, the auditorium at La Costa, and we had a beer cart going a, uh, the whole time. Of course. And between each uh, each session, there was probably a 20, 25 minute break. And it was, I mean, just hilarious. The acts were horrible. Um, and and we ended up having a mosh pit at the end. And Wait, like, Rod, that's a ship. Rod, Dude, Rod, I want in on this. Right. Like, are we going to have some version of this? Rod, for my first Rob meeting? Chase, who's now one of our regional managers, actually broke his ankle that night <laughs> jumping into the mosh pit. <laughs> if there is no mosh pit, I'm going to consider this year's sales meeting a complete failure. Just letting you no, know. No, that, that's how you know that you've got great products when you don't have to resort to... <laughs> Um, mosh, mosh pits, yeah. Talent show. Did you do a talent? Did you do a? Did you do an act? Uh, I was part of the uh, the act, yes. But I'm what? not going to tell no, you. No, you have part. to. Come on. No, well, the, our team, my team, did a. Um, it was like a variety show where we were different acts, and 
I might have uh, partnered with Randy Rubin and oh, no. Ricky Martin like act. Oh no, <laughs> that was a long time ago. <laughs> that was a long time. Ago. Le- was... Leather pants. So, are animals yeah, uh, ever involved when it? Well, comes we to did have a sales meeting? meeting where we. I don't think our product line was as good as it is now. <laughs> where we had elephants, uh, we had the Charger <laughs> cheerleaders, and then we had uh, the D two girls as, as well. This so. is incredible. I am so pumped for my first sales. <laughs> no, meeting. our products are a lot better. You'll see. You'll see. Uh, you won't see any of that stuff oh. this week. No, well, and we've you, been on a great run. I mean, that's yeah. that's the bottom line here. For and you and your team have done an outstanding job of executing in the marketplace, and really have gone from. Um, I know that was 15 years ago, but even in the last three or four, we've gone from being chase being chasers to right at the front of the right at the front of the pace. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, we have a great team. Uh, they're professionals. Uh, they do a great job building relationships and building advocates. And you know, I think we're thought of as the best sales team in the industry for sure pointing at me amanda yeah i'm just i am i'm still thinking about all of these crazy things i had no idea i I told harry too i just spent some time up on the sales floor for the first time earlier this earlier in the week and uh it is exactly like what i feel like you see in movies and like old movies when there's a big sale people are ringing bells everyone's going crazy it's such a cool vibe that you have really created up there and i'd imagine that kind of carries over to the whole messaging across the country yeah no doubt about it and and it's tough for the outside reps because they're out in their car you know driving along the road but we do try to create a culture where we're a big team and we celebrate success and you know i i think it's 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 tough because we're we're pushing them and uh you know we're we're giving them quotas to hit but we do try to make it fun and it's great when you get together and have a good time and get excited about new product and Harry, ring the big bell, Amanda. Well, I said, what do you think would happen if we put the big bell down here in marketing? Oh, I, I think you guys would, lot. would ring it a lot. It would we be do. taken away so fast. We're I've rung the bell enough. a few times. I've gone up there to ring the bell. It's, Have it's you? a fun thing. Yeah, of course. You haven't? We'll get. Well, you can do it okay. too. It's like ringing Absolutely. the big bell. At, we'll go up right after uh, this. Stock exchange. Done. We'll up and ring I'm the bell. In. Yeah, I love that. Glenn, thanks for being here. No, this is a really busy week for you. Congratulations on all the success with the team. And looking forward to an animal-free, talent fr- talent show-free week. Mm. Absolutely, we, the, the the product is so good. We don't need talent. But <laughs> if you do, in the last minute, decide that you need an animal, my French bulldog Chorizo is available to be the mascot. All right. So don't say no now. Nope. Just think about it. Let me think about that. Okay. And don't have her sing because she does that sometimes. <laughs> Chorizo or reading. Amanda? No, uh, Amanda. I've never heard Chorizo <laughs> sing. That would be interesting, Amanda. She. Really good at, at sports reporting, not so good at singing. Sorry, Amanda. Everyone's a critic. You know? Everyone's a critic. That was Glenn Hickey. Thanks, everybody, for listening. We're going to have a great week this week at our sales meeting, and we'll see you guys on Friday for the Pirate Ship Show. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thanks for listening to Life on the Pirate Ship. For more great content like this, visit CallawayGolf.com.